Welcome to the Coxcomb in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in southern Utah. This is one of the most impressive topographic and structural features here in southern Utah and on the Colorado Plateau. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey uh, out here in southern Utah. We're going to take a look and get an explanation as to how this feature formed, this feature known as the Coxcomb, but it's really part of a larger structural feature that spans from northern Arizona well into southern Utah, known as the East Kaibab Monocline. So let's take a look at the surroundings. I've got a diagram for you and let's piece this whole thing together. So let's start with some observations here. We're looking north, right along the axis of the Coxcomb. And one of the things we can see here is the topography sort of makes itself um, into these ridges, these like steep areas. Then there's these valleys that run more or less north-south. And then there's these ridges like this one I'm standing on here, which runs right through uh, the middle of the view. Another little valley down there where my truck is and then another ridge off to the east. If you look at the beds of rock here, again, the sedimentary rocks of the Colorado Plateau are typically flat lying. Think about places you go like Bryce Canyon, Zion National Park. Um, they're largely horizontal in terms of their orientation, but here things are tilted. They're actually tilted in this manner off to the east um, with everything kind of tilted and dipping towards the east. You can see that on this hogsback just in front of us here. Uh, the beds are tipping that way. So as we move to the right, those are the younger rock layers. We're going up section, up into younger stratigraphic layers. And as we swing around over here towards the west, we are going into older layers. These rocks are sitting at the bottom of the stack. So we have all these impressive layers tilted on end, and yet you don't have to go very far to the west here, uh, up over that ridge, or pretty much right at the top of that ridge, to see rocks that are pretty close to horizontal. They're not tilted over there. And the same holds true when we go off to the east, uh, up to the top of that ridge line there, those rocks are slightly dipping to the east, but not in too much of a distance traveled to the east. They turn more or less horizontal. So we have rocks that are tilted, but as you move away from the tilted section of rocks, the rocks become horizontal. Uh, kind of taking a view to the south here, looking this way, we can see Right along this ridge line here where I'm standing, you can see these rocks are tilted again to the left. This is to the east, we're looking south here. And it's these harder rocks that form these more resistant ridges. So these are what we call hogbacks. These are these um, ridges of rock formed by tilted rocks, usually capped by a more resistant rock, and then it has softer rock underneath. So we can see this, this sandstone, this red brown sandstone here, right along the ridge line. But as we look down below us here, we see a, a softer unit, a gray mudstone, uh, maybe a shaley unit that forms these softer layers. And in fact, the valleys where the washes run are even softer layers. So we have these alternating hard and soft layers, the hard layers forming the ridges, the soft layers forming the valleys. And let me take you to a diagram here that will hopefully um, kind of put the whole thing into perspective. And so the idea here is that these rocks were originally horizontal, but at the end of the Cretaceous, about, oh, 70 or so million years ago, um, there was compression from all sides. Let me see if I can get this here. So what we have here is a diagram showing the structures that we see as we look to the north. So this is a cross section from west to east, showing the different layers that we have here and the overall structure that we see here along the East Kaibab monocline. So these again were our sedimentary rock layers. They were deposited originally horizontally. Um, and then later at the end of the Cretaceous, about 70 or so million years ago, the rocks underwent compression. We had a subduction zone along the western margin of Western North America. The rocks were compressed. That created faults at depth, such as this reverse fault here. A lot of these monoclines are cored by reverse faults such as this, and that caused the rocks to compress and bend, forming a high side and a low side. So distant from the, the fault and the fold, the rocks are close to horizontal, as you can see over here off to the east. And then if you go further to the west here, they're also horizontal. 
Looking in a little bit closer here, you can see the different layers. The Navajo sandstone, which forms this big white ridge just to my west. Then there's some softer rocks, the Entrada Formation and Carmel Formation, which form a valley here. Um, then the Dakotas Formation, which is the rocks I'm standing on on this ridge. Then another valley in a soft unit, the Tropic Shale. And then from that point all the way up to the ridge line to the east is a, a series of uh, units called the Straight Cliffs Formation. It's a lot of sandstones, mudstones deposited during the Cretaceous. So we've got, again, the white Navajo sandstone, a valley, the ridge I'm on, and that matches the topography we see just in front of us here. These, the white layers off to the west, that's the Navajo sandstone, the hard resistant sandstone. Then we get into these red layers here, forming the slopes on the outside of that white sandstone. That's part of the Carmel Formation. In the valley here, we have the Carmel and the Entrada Formations, which are softer. And then that finally go, grades into this uh, ridge of Dakota sandstone here in front of me. So just a quick diagram to explain a little bit of how these uh, monoclines form. They're pretty common on the Colorado Plateau. There's maybe uh, a dozen or so scattered throughout the Colorado Plateau, but this is one of the major ones. This is also one of the reasons why we have such uplift along the Grand Canyon region, the main visitation area, like the North Rim area, is this structural feature which is actually pushed up the west side um, relative to the east side. So it's a structural and a topographic feature. Well, thanks for joining me on this little excursion on a windy day here up on the ridge here to look at the Coxcomb, the East Kaibab monocline, and this impressive structural and topographic feature here in Southern Utah. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.